I thought it was time for another classic JP and the Beans. Top freaking um, five. It's top five time. It is. Top it's top five, five time. time. We've hit everything we needed to hit. It's totally top agree. five time. Totally agree. All right. Top five characters that have not yet been announced that we would like to see in chapter one, Gods and Monsters. Riley, you go first with number five. I want to first say that most, if not all of these, I want to be series. So I'm going to start that premise off okay. right okay. there. So I didn't come up with a movie. Great. But I came up with characters that in particular you'd like to see in a show. I'm starting off number five with the – and see, I kind of also had James Gunn in mind because I like I know okay. he likes the uniqueness of yes. some stuff. Yes. And I think that's where DC can really thrive. I think they have a lot of oddball characters <laughs> compared, no compared to Marvel. There's no doubt. So number five, I have the Metal Men. Mm-hmm. It's unique enough. I think it'd be fun. Love that pick. I think – I'm going Metal Men with Those number are great five characters. Right, great characters. They're extraordinarily unique, and they they, they would just be fun supporting characters in yep. other projects. Yes, like you don't have to have 19 seasons of the Metal Men, but if you have like one li- limited series and then yep. they show up in a Justice League, yep. to help out for 10 minutes, I think that's pretty cool. Mm, that's great. You know what I mean? Yep. Like that's pretty cool. That's great. That's my number five. All right, great number five. Love that. My number five is a duo. Hawkman and Hawk Girl are my number five. I think that those characters have their own very unique lore. The idea of the fact that they are so entwined with each other and yet very tragic, right? A little romance in there, but hey, you die, you get reincarnated. The amnesia thing kicks in. You don't necessarily remember what's happened in the past. You remember some of it. Fascinating, fascinating. I'd love to see Hawkman and Hawk Girl. That's my number five. Solid pick. Thank you. Solid pick. My number four, Cyborg. This is a little bit of, uh, I'm going to throw a bone, I'm going to throw a bone here to Zack Snyder's Justice League cut. Ray Fisher portrayed Cyborg extraordinarily well, in particular in the extended cut where he was given just more room to do things. And I thought he was awesome. I've enjoyed the character of Cyborg in the Justice League comics since he became an integral part with the New 52 over a decade ago. I would really enjoy seeing Cyborg, not as a solo character in a solo movie, but I think he is a tremendous supporting character. So Cyborg is my number four. On my number board. four is Firestorm Ooh. because of the power set being super unique. Yep. Um and the dynamic between the two characters becoming the one, mm-hmm. I think that's a really fascinating thing that you could do a lot of different things with. So I'm going to say Firestorm at number four. Okay. Great choice. Love that. You're at, number three, sir. And my number three changed, which is hilarious because of what huh. happened. So my original number three was Hawkman and Hawkgirl. Ooh. They they dropped off the list. Hello. Because... And I only had him that high because I liked Hawkman in Black Adam. You bet. But I don't know if they'd bring him back for Hawkman at this point in time. So I have no idea what's going on with that. Again, he's best friends with Amanda Waller. He's got the end. You think. You would think. (laughs) But you don't know. (laughs) Number three, I have Static Shock. And we mentioned this before. And I love Static. I grew up with Static. He's a unique, cool character. He's also like a fanboy of the other heroes. Mm -hmm. Because like I remember him teaming up with Batman. And he was like, I'm teaming up with Batman. Man, this is awesome. <laughs> so I'm going Static Shock at number three. Great pick. I love Great Static. Pick. Love that. My number three is Sinestro. I want to see outstanding villains. We talked about Lex Luthor earlier, so he could have existed here in this place. I feel safe that we're going to get Lex Luthor. So what I'm not as certain about, hopeful, optimistic, but I would love to see Sinestro and give me bad Sinestro, creating the Yellow Lantern core. Sinestro, wreaking havoc, unleashing fear, because it's just the right thing to do. Fear controls people in the universe, and the universe needs to be controlled. Hence, fear. Hence, Sinestro and his Yellow Lantern core. Give me some Sinestro. That's my number three. My number two is Plastic Man. If there is a DC character that is James Gunn, it's Plastic Man. He's freaking nuts. He's hilarious. And part of what is 
great and extraordinary is his power set is actually nigh unstoppable. Pretty cool. He is ranunculus. He's not just Mr. Fantastic from Fantastic Four that can stretch out. He can shape shift. He is extraordinarily malleable. He is durable, is all get out. And in his own way, he's freaking fearless. He just jumps in and he always can get everyone's go. So give me some Plastic Man. I think it's a great pick. Number two. My number two, Plastic Man. Come on! Come on! <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had the same thing. Yes. It's all the same thoughts. I was like, you know what? We haven't seen a really good it's even or, plastic, man. Well, not even that. We haven't even seen a really well portrayed stretchy guy. Yeah. Yeah. In a very long time. Give us a stretchy guy. Yeah, right? You bet? So that's you number bet. two. Okay, if your number one is not the number one that I think it is. Hey, I'll I'll tell you what. I forgot him one time. I will never do it again. Good. I will never Good. do it again. This it, will always be our It's one. the only it's number the only one. Number it one. is Martian Manhunter. 100%. By far. 100%. By far. Not even close. No, it's not. Do you know how awesome it is? See, first of all, if you're going to do a detective series, you give it to Martian Manhunter, who is a detective. Interesting. Could we see him introduced in Lanterns? Well, don't. You start with me. <laughs> if, any, if, any, if any character deserves any kind of love, mm -hmm. it is Martian Manhunter. This man deserves it. Mm -hmm. Martian Manhunter, what a what a phenomenal character. Part of what I enjoy so much is how much in the I want to call it the original. So Grant Morrison, we've thrown his name out there because James Gunn has cited him as a direct inspiration with the Brave and the Bold, right? Well, Grant Morrison made his bones on a Justice League run in what would have been like late 90s, early 2000s that's tremendous, absolutely classic status. And Martian Manhunter is a critical component of that group during Grant Morrison's time. And the link that he is, that he provides between all of these diverse characters that come and go in the Justice League, Martian Manhunter is one of the steady bedrocks of that group. And in such an extraordinary way, because he can relate to Superman, he can relate to Batman, he can relate to one woman and everybody else in between. He's, he's the green glue. And here is the best selling point for Martian Manhunter in case DC gets worried about anything. You could literally have anybody play a Martian Manhunter as long as you have the same voice when he's in alien form. Okay? That's literally it. You could have anybody be Martian Manhunter for three movies as long as when he goes alien, there's the same epic voice, James Earl Jones-esque voice voicing okay. him. You got it. Perfect. You got it. Yeah. That's where I sit. Yeah. No question. I think this is the first time we had two matching. Right. Top two. Our That's top impressive. two matched. Good for us. When you said plastic, I'm like, no shit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good for us. Huh? 